For the last four years, Spider-Man PS4 has been easily the most talked about comic book video game. It's one of the rare ones that actually sticks around in the cultural zeitgeist instead of being lost to the sands of time. <laughs> I'm sorry, Ultimate Alliance 3. I'm sorry nobody loves you. This game came out in the year of our Lord 2018. He is trying to use Bible verses to get me to buy him Fortnite skins. Are you doing the Fortnite emo? Games like God of War, Red Dead Redemption 2, and Donkey Kong fighting game. And the fact that this game hasn't been lost with all of those juggernauts throughout the years really says a lot about this game. And for the last five years, everyone has been raving about how Spider-Man is a masterpiece. Everyone should play. One of the greatest things ever. And easily the greatest thing for the Spider-Man franchise since the Spider-Man bed cover. Lord have mercy. I was salivating at the chance to play this game until realizing I was on the sinking ship of having an extra Xbox One. I would head over to friends' houses, watching, waiting as they would play this game, and I'd sit in the corner jealous just at how fun it would look. I tried everything, but nothing seemed to work. All I had was Infinity 2.0, as I would see all the videos on YouTube at how great this game was, and for a while, I just assumed I would have to wait 90 years until I could afford a PS5 to play this game along with its sequel. Until the Day of Salvation. <laughs> The gods of Valve somehow managed to get this sucker on PC, and ever since I've been addicted to this game. For the last few weeks, I have just been playing this game non-stop, putting in over 25 hours into this game. That's why for the last three weeks I've been MIA, but now I'm back, and I am here to review Spider-Man PS4 and explain why it is still amazing four years later. The introduction is a perfect opening to a video game, showing us these incredible graphics and showing us Peter and at the same time instantly setting the tone and showing how amazing it is to actually be Spider-Man. It's just so good. Actually, I'm just going to shut up. Let's just watch it. Here we are, and boom, we are swinging, and this web swinging is amazing. Never does this get old. It is so fun, and right off the bat, you just realize how fun this game is, because this core mechanic is so integral to the game, and they get it so right that it will never not be fun just to swing around this city. I just cannot express how fun this web swinging is. It is so good, it is so great, and just nails everything I want out of Spider-Man swinging through the city. And compared to the only other Spider-Man game I've played, Spider-Man Friend or Foe on the Wii, this is like going from a caterpillar ride in an amusement park to a blast off roller coaster at Six Flags. And yes, I said Spider-Man friend or foe swinging. I know, I can feel your pain. And you know what? You guys can make it up to me by following me on OnlyFans. But the mask stays on. Within this first mission, we are instantly thrown into combat and the story so quickly. And man, oh man, this is where we realize how fantastic of a story and presentation we are in for. Instantly, we see how cinematic this game is going to be and throughout the rest of the game. First level gives us a taste of what we are in for and the amazing levels that are we going to see throughout the rest of this game. The levels throughout the entire game are just incredible. Is each level as Spider-Man is so unique with great design that allows you to be put into a new scenario each time with each being as great as the rest. And this game as well is just so incredible when it comes to how cinematic it is. It really just feels like a 20 hour Spider-Man movie. A lot of these scenes that we see in the game are just as good as ones you'd see in a movie and that is due to the fantastic story. This story is absolutely incredible as we see a Spider-Man that has such a rich history trying to figure out this turf war that has started out in the beginning then he has to figure out what is really happening with these new threats, the demons, and Mr. Negative, and where that ends up leading. I don't want to show too much because of where this story goes, it is just absolutely jaw-dropping with how much they use Spider-Man's lore and his rogues gallery, and that it never feels overwhelming. And the story never feels like it lingers on any plot point for too long. The pace of this plot is pitch perfect, and at least one of the most satisfying Spider-Man stories that I have ever experienced. Honestly, this is one of Spidey's best stories, and it is because of how the game uses the medium and length of the game to tell its story. The best 
Spider-Man stories are the ones that realize the strengths of their mediums and just completely build off them. Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse realized what it could do with its animation to show a world that could be as vibrant and stylistically its own thing. Spider-Man No Way Home saw how many rich movies and worlds they could build off of and that had came before them so that they could make an amazing conclusion to three separate Spider-Man franchises. And this game realized how much time it had to set up its characters and develop them while also introducing plenty of plot threads that they're able to pick up later in the game allowing the story to end up crescendoing into one of the best finales that I've ever seen in a video game and it just leaves your jaw on the floor. I usually don't focus on stories in video games this much because in video games stories aren't the most important part. As much as I love games like Breath of the Wild or Donkey Kong Tropical Freeze, I like when they have fun plots, I don't expect masterpieces as I am looking more for the gameplay and setting. And most games go off that formula, with the best part of those games being the gameplay or the setting. Let's look at a few examples. Arkham City, the best part is the open world and the combat. Donkey Kong Tropical Freeze, best part, the gameplay. Mario Odyssey, Smash Bros, Jedi Fallen Order, all these games I really like, but that is because the gameplay in those games are just great. Never am I just floored by a video game stories because usually it isn't in the forefront, but Spider-Man realizes the opportunity it had and just knocks it out of the park. Now there are other games that have stories I like, like Jedi Fallen Order, but the difference is that game story sometimes has its weak points like its ending which was uh, anticlimactic to say the least. So where to now? Probably back to GameStop to refund this game after that stupid ending. Unlike Spider-Man, from beginning to end, it is incredible, never lighting up and absolutely sticking the landing when it comes to the story. This even applies to the boss fights, where the actual mechanics of the fight are actually pretty simple. It is because the main story in those fights is what is in the forefront. What matters in these fights isn't really the challenge, but more of that cinematic feeling. That is the priority instead of the most in-depth and intricate gameplay. This story is just absolutely amazing, feeling so cinematic, being one of the best Spider-Man stories we've seen in years, but I think the real reason that this truly succeeds is due to it never losing sight of what the most essential thing of getting the game right was. If Spider-Man in this game sucked, this game would be instantly ruined. You have to nail Spider-Man when you're trying to adapt him into any medium, and they just do a perfect job here at adapting the character. Spider-Man in this game for me is what I would call my favorite interpretation of the character that I've seen in popular media. He is absolutely great, showing that depth of emotion along with that fun nature while showing how he is never going to forget the responsibility that he has, and no matter how hard he gets knocked down, he'll always get back up. Their depiction of Spider-Man is absolutely incredible, but it's also amazing how well they show us Peter Parker. We get lots of missions that allow us to see and play as Peter Parker, and we get to see how he's just as good of a person in the suit as he is out of the suit. Well, except for this, this is just some evil crap. What is going on? Sp Spider-Man, this is inhumane! And these Peter missions, I think, are just as good as we get a time to take a break and slow down as Peter. We see how he tries to help everyone he knows. We see how good of a person he is, and that leads us to in the game when we're playing as Spider-Man, wanting to help other people. This makes it when we are playing the game, we'll take time to do side missions that build off of previous missions that we've done, because we see how the story has impacted normal civilians' lives. And it makes these missions more fun, because we buy into how Spider-Man would honestly want to help these people that he might have affected negatively and wants to make some sort of retribution. You want to help Howard get his pigeons, and you want to be a good person because that is how Spider-Man would act. Spider-Man moves constantly, dodging around bullets as he slides and swings and punches his way out of situations while also using his gadgets as well. The game builds off the Batman Arkham games type of combat with the dodge and counter ideas, but it just does it way better. In the Batman Arkham games, it just feels like you really just stand there and wait for someone to try to attack you and they just counter and then beat him down into a pulp. But in Spider-Man, the combat feels alive. You are flying all over the place, zipping under guys, on the fly, shooting webs whenever you need. Oh, there goes something else. Oh, fire over there. Boom, ooh, combo, up in the air, bam, 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 bam. Now, while the combat isn't the most innovative thing in the world, it just feels great and is just so refined that playing as Spider-Man is so good. And it is so fun to go through your skill tree as well as you unlock brand new moves that always keep the combat fresh and always feels like you have a brand new threat added to your arsenal, along with constantly getting a fresh new supply of brand new gadgets and suits that also give you new powers along with new gadgets that also keep the combat super engaging. The progression in this game is great and it's so fun to always be unlocking new skills, new gadgets, and especially those suits. Those suits 
in this game are amazing and they are so fun to try to go for and unlock. And a lot of the progression is through crime tokens or landmarks or photos or backpacks or research labs or challenge tokens. Basically these are side objectives that you can do that also progress you and give you more powers and allow you to get more suits. And a lot of these are small things that you can do from mission to mission, just swing on by to your next objective and grab one of these along the way or stop a crime. They're really easy and really fun to do but some of these like the challenge missions and research labs can feel a bit more like chores instead of fun things to do as well. These research stations are just stupid objectives that you have to do along with these challenge missions. I don't really love doing these. They're not bad but they're these side objectives that aren't as fun as they could be and I think they could have been done a bit better because I want to get all these suits and I have to play these stupid games. Now these don't ruin the game or anything. I just think they could have been better implemented because it's a lot less fun when you're trying to get all these suits and then you realize oh I got to get a base token and then you just have to rinse and repeat with these bases that are all exactly the same. There isn't any new trick or new level design. It just gets repetitive and I just think these side objectives could have been handled a bit better. Gameplay in this game is at its best when it is constantly being recontextualized into a brand new scenario from mission to mission. Combat systems and all your gadgets and all your different suit powers allow for the game to be so innovative and really show how big of a system it has and its true strengths. And when you're just doing these silly missions that just are the same beat em up style as usual of oh just go beat up 200 guys and then get your token. It doesn't do the best at showing the game's greatest strengths. But those are very small complaints because that is such a small part of the open world and just being Spider-Man and swinging through the city playing these god tier levels and an incredible story that you care about while doing all these missions fighting the demons and the Fisk men and one of the greatest video game campaigns that I've ever played with it all having very little downtime. As you go through the story the momentum you have is you're doing all these different things while playing the story is absolutely incredible leading to one of the most perfectly crafted story and gameplay combinations that leads to this game being one of the most fun things in the world and feeling like a game worthy of its titular character and it is just amazing playing as spider-man but when you're not playing spider-man uh i want to hang myself from a spider noose okay it's not that bad i had heard about these stealth missions before and after playing them yeah they're not great some are good enough. The MJ Osborne level I thought was really fun. As you uncover the plot, same with Grand Central, that was a really good mission. But like this Miles mission made me just wish I'd gotten another colonoscopy. These missions are not bad, but they just remind me of how I feel when I take my Alzheimer pills. Did I take mine today? Oh, I don't remember. That doesn't stop how much I love playing as Spider-Man. The swinging is amazing. The fighting, helping out people on the street, constantly progressing. It is just one of the most amazing things ever. The story is sensational. It sets the bar so high, I have no clue how the sequel will even come close. This game just makes you feel so good as you play it. I could just, I cannot explain how happy it makes me to say that this game actually lives up to the hype. This game is just absolutely amazing, and I love playing this game from start to finish, and I haven't even started the DLC. Sure, it isn't perfect, there are a few things that I would tweak. These stealth missions are a little bit repetitive, and there's a few things that I kinda criticize, but that's not even that bad. And these are such small points compared to everything else that this game does perfectly 95% of the time. Thank you, Insomniac, for this amazing game and putting it on PC. I don't know, maybe do Miles Morales? When is that coming out? I just, I need to play that now. I love this game. Game, and I cannot express how incredible of a playthrough I had and how much I love just getting lost in New York and playing as Spider-Man. I would absolutely encourage anyone who has access to this game to pick it up and play it. This game is absolutely amazing. I think it is easily the best Spider-Man game and it was truly amazing. I'm giving Spider-Man a 9 out of 10. It is amazing. Alright, I reviewed it. I did Spider-Man. I gave Spider-Man the review that it deserves. Now I can go play the DLC because I had to make this video and take some time off from it and i just want to play more spider-man and yeah i think i got all my thoughts out in this video oh wait did i mention how it makes me feel like spider-man